So there is the caption for the women's 500 meter time trial. And that will be the next event on the track. And the first rider is actually preparing now down there in the starting gate. Now, this is a pure time trial. This is the sort of women's version of the men's one kilometer time trial. They do two laps of the track, absolutely flat out, a truncated sprint. First competitor on the track is Svetlana Grankovskaya. And of course, she's the uh, reigning world sprint champion. And there's, uh, there's some of the uh, injuries to show. Telltale sign. She uh, fell, didn't she, when she collided with Barkov Nichenko, the former champion. So she's trying to sort of repeat what Markov Nichenko did last year because uh, the Belarus won both world titles, a 500 meter time trial on the sprint, and Grankovskaya is 50% of the way there. Here she goes. First lap, 21.428. This is the benchmark, of course, that's going to be uh, aimed at. The world record stands to Felicier Bollinger at 34.010, sitting to my right doing the commentary for French television. So there we are, 36.865. That's the uh, time for the World Sprint Champion. So now then, everybody else knows that that's the time to beat. Yeah, especially the opening 250 metres, that's what we'll be looking at. And that was at a time of 21.428. Good slow-mo there of the uh, current world champion. Notice she's got a, a little, little diamond or gold stud in her nose there. I noticed that, yes. Must help with the breathing. Hey, it must have helped her. She's world champion. Certainly is, and she's got great morale. And the thing is, when you come out to ride in another event, you're already a world champion. Well, you're on a real high. So the next competitor will be from Germany. This is Daniela Glasnitzer. There she is, just relaxing. They use these aerodynamic-style helmets with the sweep round at the front. And, of course, it's just uh, above the mouth area and allowing them to be able to breathe. Yeah, for the youngsters now that are watching and want to take up cycling, this young girl in 97 was actually the national youth champion. In 99, she was uh, world junior champion. This year, she was Euro European champion and also uh, third in the national title. So, very good for a young lady. So, a wealth of good performances there to uh, Klaus Nietzsche, as uh, we look at the president of the UCI watching. Mr. Presidente there in our same hotel. And that, of course, is Hein Verbruggen from uh, the Netherlands. Right, Daniela Klaus Nietzsche just about ready to start. And away she goes. The technique of getting out of that gate is so important. And keeping a good line. Also, really, really, really getting the pedaling going so you get the power out. Remember, it's two laps as fast as you possibly can. The first 250 metres is the time we're looking for. Remember, we only have one competitor so far. She went through in 21.428. And... It's three quarters of a second quick up, so the German here, Klaus Nitzer, has opened up very, very well. Now can she sustain the pace? This is where it begins to hurt. This is where you start to tie up. Looking for the line, here she comes, and that is the time, 36-3-6-0, and she's the new leader, well, she's the new leader of the competition, but it's early stages. Good ride there by the German. up to the uh, closing stages here then of the time trial for Klaus Nitzer of Germany. It was a good effort, it was a controlled effort, she got out of the gates very impressively in a straight line and then settled down nicely to her rhythm and as it was pointed out you've got to get that high leg speed and that's exactly what she did. The next competitor is a Kiwi from New Zealand, it will be uh, Elizabeth Williams, only 20 years of age. Only 20 years of age, we'll have to give her a big cheer because we've got the same surname, so uh, good luck to the New Zealander there. She comes from Auckland, national champion, and she's also the Oceana champion. 
So this is probably one of the competitors uh, we'll see next year representing New Zealand in the Commonwealth Games in Manchester. So the team really that have probably made uh, the longest journey to come here. I remember when I went down to Auckland to do the Commonwealth Games, uh, my goodness me, I thought I was flying around and around the world. It went on forever and ever to get there. These competitors have got to be so careful when they get onto the track there. They can't afford to do those little slips because it could pull a muscle or something. Just got to take their time. Another important part here, the coach there making sure the double toe straps and they keep the feet firmly on the pedals. That's where, got, that's where the power starts to generate. If you haven't got the power from the feet, then forget the rest of it. And also, of course, it prevents you, doesn't it, from pulling your foot away. Like, you know, like we've all done well. Mind you, you never raced with toe clips and straps, did you? You were always a clipless man, weren't you? Were you always a clipless man? Well, here we are. Thank you very much. So here we are then. Young Elizabeth Williams, 20 years of age from Auckland. The Oceana champion setting off. So we've got to look at the first 250 metres. That's a good sign. She's riding a little bit high. She's up on the red. And we're looking for a time better than 20.650 set by Klasnitza of Germany. Down the moment, 20.980, I believe that was. Almost 0.3 of a second at the moment, slower than the leader from Germany. Can she pick it up in the second lap? Remember, he's not winning the first. Her arms and elbows are really out, aren't they? Comes up to the line, she goes third at the moment. 37.408. So 37.408 pops uh, Elizabeth Williams of New Zealand into third position. There's the concentration there for this young girl from New Zealand. Got to get away at the start. Got to generate that power, all that training. All over the bike, isn't she? Elbows out. And also run a little bit too high. You've really got to hug that black line. She's not streamlined. She's not low enough either. That was a good old... Uh... Round of applause here, because the local rider has come on, representing Belgium, Ingeborg Marx. Now, I tell you what, I hope she makes a better job of this than she did of the sprint, because she completely missed the timing pad in the sprint and had the slowest time. But also, you've got to be careful this young lady. She's actually, at last year's Olympics, she finished 11th in the powerlifting competition. And the Belgium Cycling Federation were there. They thought, hey, if you've got that sort of power, you know, we want to, we want to make you a cyclist. So, uh, what, how long has it been since the Olympics? Probably, what, last August, September. So she's come a long way. World champion. Look at the way she stands. Look, she stands like she's ready for business, just like in powerlifting. Look, arms by the side. Of course, in powerlifting, you just pick it up. Uh, is it far as your, far as your hips? I think it is, isn't it? It's a yeah. sort of uh, just a, yeah. Just a jerk. Nice, colourful handlebar tape there. I bet you what, those those handlebars better be strong with her powerlifting strength. She'll rip them off, won't she? Well, I tell you what, doing the expertise commentary for Belgium away to my right is a man who knows how to ride quick on the track. It's uh, the king of the six days himself, Patrick Serkou. And, of course, Patrick Serkou was Olympic champion for the kilometre in Tokyo in 1964. So he'll be watching this with a great deal of interest. I know his eyebrows went up when she missed the timing pad in the sprint. Many mistakes this time. And also she got some uh, big fans in Scotland because she was over in Edinburgh. She got second in the Grand Prix of Edinburgh earlier in the year, so good experience for her. She's really telling people what to do. Get out of the way. There's a there's a grand champion there, Michelle Vartens, former world champion. Now, watch the clock. Concentrate. Got to get out fast. Use that power. Look at those shoulders. And, of course, Vartens is the Belgian coach. Away she goes. The crowd's right behind her. Good start, eh? Good, good start. start. She's been on this track before. She knows it like the back of her hand. Now she's got to generate that power that she's got from weightlifting. The powerlifting. That's it. Pulling those bars, pushing those legs. Look out for this split here on the first lap. 26.50 is the time to beat. Oh, look at that. She's six one thousandths of a second slower than Klaus Nitzer of Germany. But I tell you what, this woman's powerful. Maybe over the second half she can make it up. The crowd have woke up. They're going potty. The crowd are going potty because there's a Belgian competitor on the track. Here she comes. Second spot then for Ingeborg Marx of Germany, uh, of Belgium. Forgive me, 36.773. Nice, uh, excellent ride there. Excellent ride there by the Belgian girl. The only thing she might be lacking as she plays the crowd is probably from her breathing. Because obviously, you know, it's a completely different exercise with the powerlifting is from cycling. So give her a few more years and... Uh... Oh, look at that. She's happy. She's a happy lass. It's a chance to see that starting effort again. Just watch uh, 
The idea, of course, is to keep the body as still as possible and then get all that energy through the machine and get that gear moving. It's a little bit like trying to lift a weight in a gym, isn't it? Trying to get the gear moving. This girl definitely had that weight. At UPS, we don't just go by the book, we go beyond it. Did you know, the way new cars are taxed has changed. From now on, the less they pollute, the less you pay. It's a chance to do your bit for the environment and save yourself money. A breath of fresh air for the motorist and everyone else. buy it in the shops you have to order by phone with a four hour lineup of classic artists like these it just hits the road and keeps going my name is luca i live on the second floor To get your copy, call now. Never a girl like you Inside, we know great music when we hear it. Back to the World Track Championships. With Kia, a commitment to value. So this is the fifth competitor now just preparing uh, on the track for the two-lap time trial. Representing the Netherlands is Yvonne uh, Heynar from the Netherlands, the fifth competitor to go. So Heynar there on the line. She's the current uh, Dutch champion, but also she used to be a speed skater. She was the champion at 500 metres, 1,000 and 1,500. All the short stuff. She only started cycling six months ago. And her best time was in one of the World Cups, she did 35.5. Remember, that was at Mexico. And she's not, she's only been using these tri -bars for the last few weeks. Time like that here would put her in the lead in the competition because 36.360 is the leading time at the moment. Still Danielle Klotznitzer of Germany then holding the gold medal position, but there's still a lot of stars to come. Well, here we are, the former speed skater going well down the back straight. She's got good leg speed. And, of course, when you think of speed skaters, for me, I think of people like Eric Hyden, who was a fantastic speed skater, and then, of course, crossed over to the 7-11 uh, and most roller team. She's got to lift the tempo off the pace there in that opening lap, and she's struggling to hold a good line. She actually went outside of the red line at one point. That means you're travelling further around the track. You've got to hold that black line tight. Here she comes, full spot, then, for the Dutch competitor. Full spot for Hingenar of the Netherlands, 36.926. She was never really on the pace. But for a newcomer, there's what, as you said, only been riding for six months with the right coaching. Who knows, she might have a lot of talent there. Produced some wonderful bike riders over the years, the, uh, the Netherlands. And we were privy to see the star last night in uh, Leontine Zaylard van Morsel winning the individual pursuit. And uh, for this young girl, she's only been cycling for six months. She carries on for a few more years and is in the same team as Leontine, travels the world with her to races. She's going to pick up an awful lot. A little bit of the talent from Van Morsel rubs off on her. That could be very, very useful. Right, we switch to the United States of America for the next competitor. It's uh, competitor number six in this women's 500 metre time trial. And we welcome Tammy Thomas. Yeah, Tammy Thomas. She actually trains in uh, Mississippi. Her best is uh, 
for this time. She does her toe, toe slaps up there. The Colorado Springs is 34.3. 34 She's been riding for six years, and what a result she had last night with that silver medal. 34.3, that's an incredibly respectable time. The world record of 34.010. 34.3, I reckon that would give her the gold medal here on this track. And of course, after last night's result, it was 10 years since we've last had a medal for the Americans. It's totally, oh, it's a bit of a, some hiccups there at the start. She's got to get it going, you've got to get that power going. Don't want to sit down until you're up to speed. That's it, that's it, down the back straight, finish so up to speed, you've got to sit down and then you've got to start working. I notice she's got no try bars at all, she's going for the conventional handle bars. Coming round here, here's the bell, what's it going to be? 20.589, good time so far for the first lap. So fastest at this stage is Tammy Thomas of the United States of America, and she's looking powerful, looking good. She's had some good places in the World Cup competition. Thomas could become the new leader, she is. Tammy Thomas from the United States of America. Heads the chart now, 36.259. That was an impressive ride. Good ride there by the American. Remember, she was here to quite late last night because she got a second place in the sprint. Of course, if you get a medal, you have to go to the dope control. That takes a little while. All the competitors who win medals go to the dope control. So there's no uh, tricky business going on. See, all that power is being driven, driven through the bike. Caption uh, gives us the composition then of the leading places after six riders. Next to go, representing Hungary will be uh, Zabolocci. Zabolocci next, 23 years of age. And uh, just like the Dutch competitor, she was also a speed skater. European under 23, champion on a couple of occasions. Yeah, Zabolocci at the Olympics, she finished in 12th place. And just yesterday in the sprint, she finished up six, so obviously she's got the speed. But this is a different sort of speed. This is over two laps, full on. Well, Hungary have never won a medal in this. In fact, uh, over the years since the competition started, it's been a sort of private property of the Queen herself. Felicia Bollinger, sitting away to my right, who's now retired. But she won the, comp uh, won the event every time it was held. In fact, nobody else could get her looking. But now, of course, she's uh, vacated the crown. There she is then, in the back straight, Zabolocci from Hungary. Time she's got a beat. Well, fastest opening lap, 20.589. Just down on that. It's a good ride, though, isn't it? That's respectable. She's up there with a shout here. Got to keep this tempo up. Here she comes, still driving hard and going well. Heads roll over the place, though, isn't it? 36.353, second then for the Hungarian. But her style at the end, wasn't it? Ragged, she was rolling all over the place. Just trying to generate that power, and it took her over, well, just under a lap before she actually got her arms onto the uh, the tie position. See the slow-mo there, hugging that black line, trying to keep it low. Obviously, she doesn't want to hit one of those uh, sponges, because as we saw in the team pursuit, a few days ago, you hit one of those punches and you've got to be so careful because it caused a nasty crash. I'll tell you what I have noticed in the field here um, is that the, the competitors from China have actually taken the silver medal in the last two years, and uh, there's nobody here actually from China competing this time. I can't quite understand that, especially in view of the fact that they've got the Olympics. I would have thought they've been keen to show. Also, it's uh I hear there's a big illness in the Great Britain camp with uh, Julia Forrester. This is right uh, for British viewers that are out there anxiously waiting for Julia Forrester to appear in the Times. All the sad news is she's not going to be riding. And uh, I was talking down in the uh, British uh, area in the middle of the track, and they said they'd had a call from the hotel, and she's just not well. I have no more information at the moment, but rather sadly, Julia Forrester is not going to be taking part. There'll be a lot of sad people down at Turnhill because she used to actually. She actually she lived in London, she used to be a geography teacher, and she used to come to the track to ride, and we used to have a lot of fun with her. Former runner as well, and a very good athlete. Right, next on the track is going to be uh, Kerry Mears. She's another one of the young Australians that's uh, coming through, and she was actually the world junior champion uh, for this particular time trial last year. So, can she go from world junior champion to world senior champion? She got some experience last year. She actually rode the Olympics, but she didn't ride this event. She actually rode the sprint, but she finished in 10th place. But that's what it's all about, development. Now, we've got to look carefully to see what she does for the 250 metres. Let's have a look. 
That's a fast time, 19.907. She's under 20 seconds. Now she's got to keep it going. She's got to keep driving all the way to the line. This is what it's all about. A mass wide open. She's trying to get the oxygen in. It's coming, it's coming, that line. It's really close. Just down the home straight. It's only 20 metres. At the line. Yes. 35.793 into first place. And she's happy. The only competitor to dip inside the 36-second barrier. She's the only competitor to go inside 20 seconds for the opening lap. And this youngster has now, well, showed the rest of the field that Australia are here and here seriously. Former world junior champion now leads. What a controlled ride that was. Good speed. And in the centre, I can see they're already looking happy in the Aussie camp. And there's the coach. He's over the moon about that. Good ride by Mears. There we are then, look, she tops the table. She's almost half a second quicker than her nearest rival, which is Thomas in the United States, and the Hungarian sitting in third spot, Zabaloshi. What a ride that was. Now, we welcome uh, onto the track next a competitor that's uh, been around a long, long time. She's a former sprinter. This is Oksana Grishina, 33 years of age, rep representing Russia, and uh, I can remember this woman winning a bronze medal in the sprint a good few years ago. Well. Russia have, uh, have meddled here so far at the Worlds. They've had a third and a second in the individual pursuit in the uh, women's competition. So now then, what are the chances here? Rishina. Every little bit of aerodynamics there. They've got the overshoes. Just in case the shoelaces get caught in the wind, that is. Yeah. Even though there's no wind on this indoor track. Here we go. She's just seen what the Aussies can do. So the benchmark we're looking at is 19.907 for Kerry Mears of Australia. As I said, the only competitor to dip inside the 20-second barrier. So Grishina settling down to the job in hand. Right, coming up to the line. That's the fastest lap shown underneath. She's outsided by almost half a second. So the Aussie's still safe. And can she pick it up over the second half? Pumping away with those legs. Pumping away, just wavering around a little bit. Twin discs, she's oozing. No wind here, so the steering's not a problem. Second for Grishina, 36.048. So the former bronze medal winner in the sprint posts her intentions here with a silver medal position at this stage. Yeah, I was just noticing there, Hugh, as she crossed the line, she shook her head, so obviously she's not happy with that ride. Somewhere along the ride, maybe just didn't get the power out. See the start there, so, so important. See, every little bit counts, and it's every little time you, you weave off of that black line, or you just don't quite get the pedals around as hard as you possibly want. But you, you, you've got to just stay concentrated for the whole of this, what, 34, 35 seconds. Just another point to bring into play as well there. After they've started out of the gate, and as they go into the centre of that first banking, virtually on the 200-metre marker, there's a ridge where the, uh, the door is opened, I've mentioned this earlier, and as you're just starting to find your rhythm, it must be a little bit off-putting. There she is, Mia, she's celebrating, maybe a little premature, we'll have to wait and see, because there's still quite a few more competitors to go. So next should have been Julie Forrester, the British champion, British record holder, but in case you're just uh, turning on to watch, let me tell you, rather sadly, Julie Forrester is not taking part in the competition. She's sick, and uh, she's not here. So next in the United States of America will be Tanya Lindenmuth, Lindenmuth next, from Pennsylvania, a 21-year-old. She's a national champion, actually, in this event, and also in the match sprint. But a coach said this morning that she uh, she felt a little bit a little bit sick, so I don't know if he was uh, just playing with us, but we'll soon see by the time. Right, so the time to uh, beat. And remember, this is another youngster, only 21. Mir's still there with that 19.907. That is impressive, isn't it? It's the only competitor of the whole field so far that has gone inside that 20-second barrier. Now, I tell you what, this looks an impressive start to me. It looks impressive. She's got that gear turning well, no. So, it's amazing, isn't it, how he can be deceptive? I mean, her style looked really wonderful, but she's not on the pace. Well, she wasn't in the opening lap. Yeah, fantastic style. She comes from a good track background. She actually comes from... She was actually born in Allentown, Pennsylvania, which is just at the road from Trexeltown. One full track in Pennsylvania, of course, the home of Marty Neustein. Crosses the line there, seventh place, 36.847. But there's the Aussie at the moment, just on the rollers. Just wanted to warm down.
you remember the comment from Jason Queeley when I said to him, what was it like with you leading and there were three more to go? Well, you see little Kerry Mears here from Australia is going through the same thing because she's still leading and uh, there's only, what, five more to go? I'll tell you something about Jason. Every time I go, every time I go food shop with my little boy, every time we go to the cereal package, he says, oh, I must have that one with Jason in the front, on the front of the Kellogg's packet. Must have that, make me a good bike rider. Spacious. Luxurious. And comfortable. Welcome to the essence of contemporary minivan. Kia Sedona. All you need to do is to enjoy yourself. Surprise yourself with Kia Sedona. Kia Motors. from the third and final Grand Tour of 2001, the Vuelta de España. And after the hell of the Pyrenees, it's sweet relief for David Miller. They're out of the mountains, and now there's a chance for the sprinters to haul back some time. Click eurosport.co.uk and have the experts answer your questions live. The Tour of Spain, Sunday afternoon at 3.30, live on British Eurosport. With Kia, a commitment to value. Snooker's champions gather in Glasgow from the Thistle Hotel. Twelve of the biggest names, including Ronnie O'Sullivan, the newly crowned Embassy World Champion, competing for prize money of £200,000. The 13th Regal Masters, highlights from Tuesday at 5.30 and Wednesday at 7 on British Eurosport. So the women's 500 metre time trial getting towards its closing stages now. And the leader of the competition is Kerry Mears from Australia. And uh, her time, 35.793, with an opening lap of 19.907, the only competitor to have dipped under the 20-second barrier so far. Six more competitors to go, and the first of those six comes from the Ukraine, and it's uh, Lyudmila Viprelo. There's going to be a lot of uh, happy people at the moment in the Ukrainian camp after uh, last night's team pursuit victory, but of course they beat uh, Great Britain. Nice green glasses there. Really trendy. Viparello then next away for the Ukraine. Now in the sprint she was quite nervous. She crashed at one point, she actually crashed to the woman who went on to win the world title, that was Grankovskaya, and I think that unnerved her. Now she's on her own, so there's not a problem. Yeah, she ended up finishing the end in the sprint. 2.50 time at 20.380, oh, she's got to start to lift it, she wants to get up there in the middle, she's got to start pushing it. It's second, though, at that stage, so it's a good opening lap. Now, has she got the power over the second 250 to deprive Kerry Mears of Australia with the lead? The answer is no. 0.641 off the pace, six spot then, so still, Mears of Australia is the leader. The world junior champion last year, well, what a step that would be if she could add the senior crown. Yeah, it's a shame there for Ukrainian girls. She said over one lap, she's in second place, but this race is done over two laps. Yeah, as I said, this is the equivalent to the men's kilometer. It's a tough one. It's the closing effort. And uh, France will provide us with the next competitor. Daniel model on there, you can see in that white top, he's just uh, steadying uh, the French competitor. There she is, Magali Four. As Mears 
warms down on the rollers and I can't imagine that she can look actually at the scoreboard because uh, we've got uh, this French competitor four, then uh, a, a Mexican uh, a 500 meter time trial and then three more so it's just five to go so the youngster from Australia Mears he's five away from a gold medal but she's doing she's doing the right thing now nothing else you can do you just gotta do your warm down look after your body so she's on the rollers she's turning the legs just getting Getting the blood flowing to the legs, just relaxing. Put the earphones in so she can listen to some music. So Magali Four from uh, France, uh, not a bad sprinter. She was uh, third actually in the sprint competition in 1996. The World Championships last year in Manchester, she was ninth in this event, and also went to the Olympics where she finished 11th. Can she get a medal today? Wealth of experience, uh, Magali Four. Trying to emulate the feats, as I said earlier, of the great Felicia Ballanger, who was a world champion from 96 through to 1999. Daniel Morland right there, shouting right in her ear after, what, two metres? Got to keep it low, got to generate the power over the door, which is slightly open. That was a very professional start, wasn't it? Wonderful, out of the blocks, you can see the class, all the coaching that has gone, obviously, in to the preparation of this competitor, Magali Four. She's got to pick the pace up, though, if she wants to get on the podium. That is a fourth spot, actually, for the opening lap. Mears, Grishina and Thomas were quicker. Now then, what about the second 250? Still looks good. Down in that sort of Superman streamlined position. Second spot for four. Magali four goes second. 35.951. That's only the second time inside the 36 second barrier. So the competition is hotting up. It's Australia now in the gold medal position, and France now sitting in the silver. We've only got four more competitors to go. And Krishina of Russia has been pushed down into the bronze medal spot. Look at that for a closing effort. Good technique, very good. The body almost still as she drives through the air, just like an arrow. And Daniel Modelon, there he is, vociferously encouraging his rider at the start to get going. Did the trick. Definitely. Stay second at the moment, but I say still got four competitors to go. Four more to go. It's yeah. hotting up. I know it's only two laps of the track, and people say two laps of the track. Come on, that's boring. But I tell you what, there's still excitement, isn't there? Coming here next is Nancy uh, Contreras from Mexico. I must tell you a quick story. I um, was going to meet Hugh today down in the lobby at 12 o'clock, so of course I got in the lift at 5 to 12. As I got in the lift, who was in there? This young lady <laughs> and the whole Mexican team. As I got in there, I said, hola, and they all started talking to me. So I just said to her, hey, good luck for today. And look at that beautiful helmet, isn't it shiny? Chrome, eh? And of course, uh, this uh, competitor will enjoy the benefits of preparing and racing at altitude on that fast Mexico track that's seen so many world records. Well, Contreras will be next to go. Now, that is a big advantage, because every time I've been to altitude for training, you come down to sea level, and if, you, if your time is just right, you absolutely fly when you're down here. It's fantastic, it is. Well, my only sad experience of altitude is when I rode my last amateur race in the Tour of Mexico, and we started at 7,000 feet, and I tell you, I've never felt so ill in my life. But here we go, this is Contreras on the way. And last year in Manchester, she finished in sixth place. So hopefully she's timed it just right to come down from altitude. Cracking time recently in Mexico, 34.205, only just off the world record. The good form is continuing here. A third of a second up on the leader, and she at the moment has got the possibility of winning the gold, or at least going to the head of the table. Here she comes looking for the line. This could be the new leader. Motoring to the line, yes. Look at that for a time. 34.996, the new leader of the competition, the first competitor to go into side 35 seconds Mears looks up at the big scoreboard here and now she's now gone down into silver medal position so it's Mexico that lead and that was a very impressive ride very very impressive she did everything possibly right she got out the blocks the first 250 she drove in and she continued on for the second lap there's her coach there God, he's going wild Yes, 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 he said, yes. But remember, it's not all over yet. We've still got three more riders to go. He's celebrating. 
He's got something to celebrate. Mexico have never won a medal in this comp. I tell it, take it back. Mexico have won a medal. They had second in 1996 in Manchester. And it was this competitor that is now leading Contreras of Mexico. What a ride. Now then, next to come onto the track from Canada is Laurie Ann Munza. Pensive look from Mears of Australia. And that's very sporting. She uh, shows her appreciation of the ride from the Mexican competitor. So Nancy Contreras, Reyes of Mexico, is the leader. Now then, Canada provide us with this next competitor. Third last year in Manchester now. Can she spoil the party, the Mexican party? Yeah, she's already picked up a medal, the Canadian already. She was third in the sprint. Obviously wants to make it silver or gold in this. She's got to get it right. Had a good few days. Good training sessions here. Tanya Dubnikov of Canada actually did get a silver in this event in 1998. And Tanya Dubnikov uh, from Canada was also the world record holder. So they've uh, they've got uh, their names firmly in the record book. Strong. Yeah, the Canadian's still driving. Just sat down there after three quarters of a lap. Here's the bell. That's gonna that's gonna pull you on even more. Slightly down there, but still under the 20 seconds. She, now she's got to drive it. She's got a gold medal. She's got to keep it going. This is the half bit. There's nothing you can do. Third at that stage. Strong girl, or strong woman, I should say. Munzer coming up to the line. Has she done enough? Second, 35-1-5-1 for Munzer of Canada. Ooh, it really is beginning to boil, isn't it? Kerry Mears goes down another place. So now she's uh, tenaciously hanging on to a medal spot with two more to go. That's the Aussie, but the lead is still with uh, Contreras uh, Reyes of Mexico. Munzer of Canada second, Mears of Australia third. Yeah, I was just looking down the middle here at the, uh, the warm-down section where the riders ride now. The, uh, the director and the assistant director from Mexico are actually walking around as well. They're so nervous, they're so excited about the possibility of having a gold medal. They're twitching, aren't they? <laughs> twitching. Now there's two more to go. So the Mexican girl's definitely got a medal, she's definitely got a bronze, whatever happens. The next competitor will be Katrin Meinke of Germany. Katrin Meinke. In 97, she was world junior champion. In 99, she was seventh in this event. Last year, Manchester, she was actually third in the sprint. But this year, she's the European champion. Also, she rode the World Cups in Poland, where she was a runner-up, and Epo as well. And also, she went over to Australia for the Goodwill Games. So a lot of racing in this girl's legs. But remember, it all comes down to what you can do over two laps. So Meinker has been very, very busy. Can she turn all that hard work into a medal? Of course, she comes from... Uh, ..the sporting part of Germany. Look at that helmet, it looks like... Um, ..it's like out of her uh, side. Space? Oh, it's, so, yeah. it's a space helmet, isn't it? She's got to fly around this track. So, can Meinker of Germany stop the gold medal going to Mexico. Here she goes. Now then, the fastest opening lap, 19.539. And you'll get an idea if she's going to be on that kind of uh, pace. She's holding a great line at the moment. In the try bars Oh, she's under 20 seconds as well, but she's got to pick it up. She's got to drive it now. She's in with a chance of a medal, but she wants gold. She's got to go even harder. She's got to head down. This is where you hit the block. Good start then by Meinke. Can she sustain the effort? Leading time shown at the bottom of our screen. Oh, third. Third for Meinke. Point she 3 6 0 off the pace, and she has now pushed Mears of Australia out of the medals. Yeah, but I hope you see a slow mo because she, she lost an awful lot when she went off the track and hit the sponge there. The Mexican can't look. She's so excited. There is the competition leader. It's a trouble, isn't it, if you go early and you lead the competition? You've got all sorts of pressure to try and put up with. 
But that was a good ride by Meinke, and there's only one competitor left to go. In fact, I was just going to say there isn't, but they are pulling the gate out for the last competitor. So we just saw it there. She actually went off to the track. We see again, she came down on the sponge. There it goes, the sponge. She's lucky she didn't come off. Onto the blue, lost a bit of concentration. Head down, but it's a little bit too late. But at the moment, she's in third place with one more competitor to go. So still sitting at the head of the table is uh, Nancy, and there she is, Contreras Reyes of Mexico, and I reckon she will not look here. She'll cover her eyes. The coach will notify her if she's going to be the world champion. She can't be worse than silver, but of course she wants gold. And I'm just thinking I must have brought her some good luck by getting the same lift with her. I think that is right. We welcome onto the track then the final competitor. This is Natalia Markovnichenko, who last year was the world champion for the sprint and the 500-metre time trial. And she came here to defend her sprint title, but I'm afraid uh, she hit the track rather hard when she collided with the uh, Russian, and that was Grankovskaya, and she scratched from the competition, but uh, it would appear she's recovered enough to defend her crown for the 500 metres. Now, when she took the gold medal last year in Manchester, her winning time was 34.838. Now, obviously, if she can repeat that, she will win the gold medal. But this track is not as fast as Manchester. And also, like you said before, she took a nasty crash a few days ago. She went down really hard, and that's why she pulled out the sprint. So she's got to replicate her winning time of 12 months ago in Manchester on a track that is clearly not as quick as those superb fast boards up in Manchester that will host the Commonwealth Games next year. In the middle, lying down, not bearing to look, is the leader of the competition, Contreras Reyes from Mexico. Underway, she's powerful, this competitor from Belarus. 19.539 is the opening lap she's got to beat. She wasn't as quick as that last year when she won gold. But she's powerful. A sustained effort over the distance is normal. 20.078, half a second off the pace of the leader. Now then, it's all about the final 250 metres. Can Markovnichenko spoil the party for the Mexico? We'll find out shortly. She's off the crown of the bend, coming down the finishing straight. The answer is no. Markovnichenko is fourth and the world champion. He's from Mexico. And there she is. She's celebrating. It's Nancy Contreras Reyes in a stunning performance. 34. 996, the only competitor to go inside the 35 second barrier, and she strikes gold. And it's the first time ever that Mexico have won the gold medal in this discipline. So, what a ride, eh? She's happy. She's very happy. Plenty of hugs and kisses there in the Mexican camp. All that hard work, it's great. I don't think I've heard the Mexican national anthem, have you? I think maybe at the World Cup. Ah, oh, yes, for football, of course. <laughs> So here we are, that's Markov Nichenko driving for the line. But the competitor from Belarus, who won two gold medals last year, is going to go away from these world championships empty-handed. I even remember what the conversation I had with them now is. I, I, I just mentioned to him, because we've got to go a few, few, few floors down. I said to him, I've only been to Mexico once, that's the Tijuana, which is just across the border from uh, San Diego. But there she is, not tears in her eyes, I'm not surprised. A happy, happy girl. giving a snap interview immediately. She's in demand straight away. But what a performance. Superb. She's had to endure all that pressure in the middle of the track. Sitting at the head of the leaderboard, watching the rest of the competitors go, but it certainly didn't stop her. She's come home and come home to take the gold medal. There'll be a few tears there. Why not? There might be a big party in our hotel tonight. Not that I go to parties, but if they if they uh, order some special Mexican food, that'd be lovely. Enchiladas, refried beans. So you do actually eat something at times. The only thing I've seen you eat is fruit and drink mineral water. Oh, no, Mexican food is absolutely beautiful. Nice and healthy for you. It's obviously a good diet. It's certainly helped this competitor. Is she crying? I feel sure we're going to see a few tears. The emotion is starting to take over. A oh, lovely smile, eh? The ultimate aim of any sports person to win the gold medal and a world title and to be 
able, of course, to stride up to the top spot on a podium. Refreshing drink. And let me just tell you, we've got lots more to look forward to this afternoon, in particular the men's points race final. One of the most thrilling races that you can witness in the World Championships. So there is the official result of the women's 500 meter time trial. The gold medal going to uh, Nancy Contreras Reyes of Mexico in 34.996. The only competitor to dip under the 35 second barrier. The silver going to Munza of Canada and the bronze to Katrin Meinke of Germany. And just for uh, British fans, let me tell you that uh, Julie Forrester of Great Britain did not take the start falling sick overnight.